Good morning. Um, I just saw the email from um, from Daniel about the uh, running of the cables, and I know that uh, it can be quite a, a, a big question. I, I used to have snags with my uh, scope throughout the years. I even ripped on my AP scope one of my deck drive cables out, ripped it in two. But uh, one of the things that, uh, if you're looking at my scope, I just opened the roof and threw on the, the screen recorder so you could see this, is that uh, I saw from Roland's, Rolando's uh, from Astrophysics, uh, one of his mounts up to Antarctica, how they did it. Uh, everybody has their own view, and on your mount it may be different because the capacity of your mount may be different. But one of the things that I've been operating for almost four years now without a snag, as, as Kirk said before, which you can have, uh, is what I did. If you notice this bundle of, of uh, cables, I've got quite a lot of stuff coming up to the scope. And what happens is this, this cable comes down to the ground, loops back up on the ground, then comes back up into the mount area. And then the other part of it goes to the telescope somewhere else. But the point is, the big deal that I found on my scopes, which may be different, is this is the pier plate, if you can see the cursor around here. There's a Osmondi type type of pier plate. It is not an Osmondi, it's custom made giant pier plate. And what I did is I took a piece of piano wire and bolted it with two, two bolts to my pier plate, drilled two holes, and ran it all the way out the back here. You can run it further back here if you want to have more clearance. But the truth of the matter, it looks like it's hitting here. It does not hit anything on the back of the mount uh, down here or anywhere and it's under complete rotation on all positions. And that's the key. You have to have in the situation something like this, you have to have it where the, the, the tube can rotate, unlock your clutches and move it around. It doesn't hit anything. The thing about this flex wire here, and it can be a Teflon rod or a nylon or anything, it is flexible. You can grab it and pull it. So anytime anything, if it ever were to bind, this cable just doesn't rip right into directly because it's not hard connected. This rod here will flex quite a bit, almost six inches or, or almost eight inches before something would happen. So the having this extension out the back, it does put more torque on, on your scope. The astrophysics has no problem with that. I see this all the time on the 1200s. The main trick, and you can spend days and weeks and hours and years, which I have done, is minimizing the number of cables to, to, up to the top here. And in order to do that, you really have to combine things like uh, with, uh, with, say, an Icon Ranger. That's another discussion. It is possible to get all those cables down to just a few. I have more simply because I've been using this for years. I have the, the setup in order to minimize it, but there's power cable there, there's an RS-232 uh, guider cable there, there's some other stuff, but that is the big trick, minimizing the cables. But the flex shaft sticking out the back end here is the key, and for astrophysics mounts, I've seen a number of them that do this. For others, it depends on the load factors and everything in your mount, but that, that amount of cable is not a problem on the astrophysics if it does not bind or snap. Uh, that's it. It's just a quick, short uh, comment.